you underperformed last game. And these are the moments in tests that you got to persevere through. You can't run from it. It's Brown with a three. Brown is off to a great start. He has absolutely been on fire in these playoffs. Just feels like Philadelphia is running in mud right now. Here's a nice pass upside. Another three. Another hit. Been all Celtics. Boston has come back and tied this series at one win apiece. It was all Celtics in game two. This game opened up for the Celtics in the third quarter. They outscored the Sixers by 19 points, making their second best points differential in any quarter this postseason. Seven of Boston's 23 pointers on the night came in those 12 minutes. So let's bring CJ back in. And Jay Will's joining us now. So, Jay Will, I start with you. This would have been one hell of a backcourt. I just want to. Right? I mean, look at this. Records. This is like MVP backcourt over you here. went to Lehigh. I you didn't guys didn't recruit me. The bag wasn't big enough. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're talking about bags. Let's get off of that and violation. Well, not anymore. But no, Embiid, I look, I got to talk to you about Embiid. He's coming off the MVP award, comes back for game two. In game one, the offense went through James Harden. He scored 45. They win. Game two, epic collapse. Should the 76ers go as Harden goes if Embiid is truly limited. I, I, I'm not going to call the game an epic collapse. I, think I mean, they game, lost I, by 34. Yeah, but I think the game speaks more to the ceiling of where the Celtics can be as a unit, as a team. And what I will say is when you take time off, all of a sudden trying to reacclimate Joel Embiid in this lineup, it, James Harden, there's a tendency sometimes to defer. And even Joel Embiid talked about it. Hey, I have to be more aggressive. I'd much, rather have Jay, I'd much rather have Joel Embiid back in game two mm -hmm. after I know that we had a split in Boston to get set up for game three, which I think game three and game four are going to be monumental games for the 76. Even if he's limited in some way, because some people have said, let's hold him out for the whole series if he's not who he needs to be. Why are you going to hold him out for the whole series? Does well, that give you your best chance to win? There no. won't be another series if they yeah, what, yeah, yeah, series. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. What do you think? I think if you look at the way they played historically, they always figure it out. It takes them time, but it's more about how good Boston is. Boston understood. We lost game one, and B didn't play. We have to win game two any means necessary. You see how pissed Joe Mazzula was in his press conference. You see JB picking up full court, yeah. clapping as he's moving his feet. They understood that they had to win this game. I think it was more about that. The Sixers will figure it out. They're going home, and B's going to get his trophy in front of the fans, and this is when it really gets interesting. That game was more so for him to get his conditioning right, get his feet underneath him, and make sure that he's ready to go if this game goes six or seven. The series isn't won in games one or two, especially when you get the split on the road. That was house money. They already got what they needed. Okay, and by the way, I just want to say this again. Embiid said that he felt okay. He, he wasn't saying he was banged up, couldn't play, anything like that. He went, he played, and look, nine shots, 15 points. All right, can, can I tell you something about Boston? Yeah. There is a feeling, CJ, that I get when I watch Boston uh -huh. that, I, that they give me a young Golden State Warrior vibe, right? Like, like, the, like, just the way they can shoot the three, the way sometimes their guards who are better, I think, defensively, kind of reminds you of, like, Clay Thompson, Andre Iguodala back in the day when they had that team. Like, that recognizes the ceiling of what I think the Celtics can be. See, I'm so glad you're talking about the Warriors because you're giving us a perfect segue. Time now to shoot the J. All right, let's talk about Warriors, Lakers, can we? Can LeBron play 40 minutes? We put Game CJ one. Jump shot up can he sustain that level? <laughs> can he sustain that level of play to win the series? 40 minutes, Game one. I, he's gonna have to. I mean, there's, there's really no excuses right now. I mean, I, people talk about hey, minutes restrictions and things of that sort. No, LeBron's gonna have to play 40 plus minutes a night, and so is Anthony Davis. And Anthony Davis has to be the best player on the floor. That gives the Lakers the best chance to win. Okay, and then let's talk about AD. Can the Lakers win without AD playing like he did the way he played in game one, putting up 30 and 23? No, a AD consistently is going against Kevon Looney, who I think that is a matchup advantage for Anthony Davis. And also going against Draymond Green. Look, that, I think the Warriors are going to try to bring him out and involve him a lot more ball screens, take him away from the rim, which obviously hinders his great defensive ability, but he has to be the best player on the floor. Okay, and how many points for Steph tonight? Golden State to win? I mean, I'm going to say 25 or more. I mean, I think you're going to see him in a lot more high pick and roll. I think they're going to drag Anthony Davis out. Um, and I think that's going to be an advantage. I think you're going to see the pace of the game be a lot faster for Golden State, which it was in the fourth quarter when they went in that 14-0 run. Okay, what do you think? Points for 
I think he gets 30. Now, he's averaging 32 and a half in the series. I think he's going to be extremely aggressive. They're going to put him in pick and roll. They have to. The Lakers defense is too good when he doesn't have the ball. They're denying, and they're funneling him to Anthony Davis. So I would say he's going to do what he's done all season and all postseason, get buckets. Get buckets, and he's a walking bucket when you think about him. Now, when you look at this game, though, you're saying they got to move fast. That obviously doesn't benefit the Lakers. So what do the Lakers need to do to stop him? I think they need to continue to be physical. They need to continue to put him in pick and rolls, make him guard, try to tire him out. Dennis Schroeder talked about it. He moves for 23 seconds on the shot clock. He's 35 years old. He doesn't get tired. He's the best shooter to ever touch a basketball. So you have to make it as difficult as possible on him, understanding that he's still going to hit six threes on an off night like he did last night. But that's, that's the only thing you can do. Try to tire him out and hope for the best, honestly. And, and Ryan, we were talking before, like, look, out of all the teams left in the playoffs, mm -hmm. They run the least pick and roll, the Golden State Warriors, right? It's their continuity offense. So I think tonight you're going to see a higher dosage. Yeah. There's going to be a higher diet of that for them because that forces the Lakers to rotate. And whenever you can get AD involved in those pick and rolls with the shooters they have on the court, it opens up the lane for driving opportunities. Okay. Now, earlier you And talked look for them to go small, too, with Draymond at the five. I think it, it might give up an advantage for them on the rebounding side, but I think it opens the floor from a space. I was just going to ask you about that because here's the thing. You go small, then you got AD dominating, and I know you think big things of Kevin, Kevon Looney. I mean, what he's got to do to stop AD. So how does that all work out? But, I, look, at, at the end of the day, you have to negate – Anthony Davis and the size, you do that by speed, you do that by three-point shooting mm. and spacing, right? The more spacing you can create, the more three-point shots has a lot. But he has to be aggressive every night. He has to be trying to score. He has to be driving to the basket, trying to get to the free throw line, understanding that they go as he goes. Their only hope of winning this series is if he's as aggressive as possible. And the Warriors, in return, have to make sure they're putting him in pick and rolls because he's playing 40 minutes a night. And also look for Golden State to play a little bit more zone here and there. You saw that in the fourth quarter. The one thing you want to do sometimes with players who can dominate you on the interior is you want them to become content with settling for jump shots. Now, what do we question about the Lakers this entire series, right, and, and the entire playoffs? Sometimes the inconsistency right. of their ability to be aggressive. So I think you'll see Steve Kerr, who's great at countering counters, right, to be able to give them different looks defensively and make them think and make them settle sometimes for jump shots. So one more thing, Jay Will. We're talking about whether LeBron and AD can sustain this level of play. And we talked about it a couple minutes ago. LeBron playing all these minutes right now. They, they're trying to conserve him. I get it. His game has changed. But what do you need to see from him in game two for them to get the W? Just being aggressive. I mean, there's LeBron doing LeBron things. He's, he's an elite passer. I think him staying on the floor defensively, we'll, we'll see how their scheme changes in game two. But before him guarding Draymond Green allowed him to sit in the middle. Of, there were possessions where Anthony Davis and LeBron James just sat in the paint. Mm. Sat in the paint. And you talk about, you know, chasing and funneling them into the shot-making ability of – you know, Anthony Davis and LeBron, I think you're going to see LeBron be aggressive and just do LeBron things. Okay, CJ, what do you think? I think the scary thing about this Laker victory and this Laker team in general is how deep they've become. Last series, they had a different leading score in each of their wins. Ooh. Last game, D'Lo, 19, hits the game winner. Reeves has been playing well all series, but Dennis had 19 off the bench, generated 10 free throw attempts. They've shown the ability to win all different types of games. LeBron went 9 of 24. No one's talking about that. He went 9 of 24 from the field. That's not like LeBron, and they still were able to win. Yeah, and you talk about how the team used to be and what they are now. A totally different team. So much deeper. You're absolutely right. Now, speaking of what they used to be, meanwhile on planet Earth, did you guys see this? Pat Bev brought up a recent conversation he had with former Laker teammate Russell Westbrook on his podcast, and he said, Russ goes, hey, Pat, if the Lakers win, I want my ring. I ain't going to lie, Russ. We're supposed to be, we're going to be suited and booted, and I'll be all right there waiting for my ring. Jay, CJ, look at CJ, he's already smirking. What do you think? They deserve the rings if they win? I think it's, it's up to the franchise. Oh, the hesitation. <laughs> it's up to Folks, the franchise. Folks, read it to the hesitation. It's up to the franchise. No, no, why the pause? Do the, you think they should get the, the ring? The pause is historically different teams do different things, right? You look at... Uh, the year the Toronto Raptors won, won the championship. Mm -hmm. They traded DeLon Wright, one of my teammates, Jonas Valanciunas. Um, they traded them in the middle of the season, and Toronto elected to not give them rings. Ooh. So it's, it's literally up to the franchise. I think it's a nice gesture. I don't think it's necessarily necessary. Is Valanciunas mad about it? I don't think he was mad about it, but okay. I think it's more so how, how is the player traded, and is it a happy ending? Okay, Jay Will. If I were the owner of the Lakers and I saw what Pat Bev gave this team, if I were to see, hey, Russell Westbrook 
maybe understanding how he opened up his toolbox with Ty Lu, understanding Darvin Ham, first year head coach, how things panned out, I will give them both rings. Even with uh, even with Pat Bev giving the stink thing. That's who Pat Bev is. Ago. You knew who he was when you got him on your squad. That's why they liked him, correct? All right. Uh, look, he brought that I, toughness. I mean, personally for me, I will give them a ring. I'm all about Now, whether the fans think they deserve it or not, I could care less. I say. I think they were part of the DNA of our franchise that helped us get to this point. They played more than half the season. There you go. I like that, too. I'm all about the rings. Everybody should get a ring. Of course, it's not No, everybody pockets. shouldn't get a ring. Rings are earned, not guess. Yes. Okay. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.